Still down back up there to the road or something. Yeah, I mean, if you want to just straighten up a little bit right there, we can probably load your A2. I don't think he's got his radio on. What'd you say? Got a cheese sandwich in my mouth, I could all talk. Hey guys, today uh, this is part two of our video. I'm down at my dad's farm. We're shelling corn. My favorite time of the year to be down here. So come with me. I'm going to kind of show you what that process looks like. So let's go. I know this video is way off what we normally do. Um, so I'm sorry if it loses your interest a little bit. But this is moving more toward like a blog style video. And so I just kind of wanted to take the last two videos. This video and the one before this is just kind of like who I am, where I come from. Uh, what kind of makes me be wired the way I'm wired. Um, but so this video, we're going to show the guy shelling corn. Um, so to kind of give you a backstory on corn, if you know, you know, for those of you that don't know, they typically plant the corn around the 1st of April and try to get it going, growing and get it through the season. So we're now we're in the middle of October and we're starting to shell the corn. So, you know, it is a, what is that? Six months ordeal of, of a growing season to, to produce a crop. And so, you know, it's not a whole lot that goes on during the summer with the crop itself. There's tons of work that has to be done to be able to harvest a crop and get it to where it has to go. And so you work real hard in the spring, lots of dumb hours, and then you go from all your dumb hours to working on equipment and getting grain bins and tractors, and then you gotta spray it and fertilize it and do all that other stuff. Now I know this is a really corny video, and I'm sorry, dad joke. This corn that we, we, we shell, you know, it gets, uh, turn into cattle feed they uh, it's you know they make ethanol with it they do all kinds of different things they use it more for industrial purposes Hey guys, I'm sitting here with Nolan. This is uh, my, are you my least favorite or favorite nephew? I'd say least favorite. <laughs> so we're out on the farm today. So no, Nolan would be, what generation farmer are you? Third, I believe. Fourth. Papa, great. Papa hardest to eat, Dad. Oh uh, yeah. Jamie, and then yeah. you. So we're out here shelling corn today on the on the farm. 
and we're just going to kind of show you a little bit about who my family is where i come from because this was a big part of who i am and so we're gonna mess around out here and and uh see what we can find and see what kind of video we can make we'll say something well, i ain't got nothing Mr. YouTube star. Oh, I'm gonna put you out there. There's gonna be all kinds of people watching this. Oh, He's a little camera shy. Yeah. Um, we'll get him there. We'll warm yeah. him up by the end of the day. Get ready to go. There we go. I was looking on their website. You can get that right there. Like 500 bucks right now. They got it marked off for 250. Try not to kill ourselves. Oh, uh -huh. eating a bunch of dirt. Eating a bunch of dirt. And we're uh, trying to give you guys the. The money shot. Yeah, I'm riding with my brother, who shall remain anonymous. I'm gonna get him on the camera today uh, at some point. I have to do it when he's not looking, so he don't hit me. But anyway, um, this has kind of been a rough morning here. They had no rain for the month of June. That rain in May? Last day of rain was June 6th until sometime in July. So they went June 6th to sometime in July, no rain. And it was unseasonably or unusually hot during that time. And typically, corn tassels uh, in the month of June. And that's when you need your rain the most, really. Well, that's when your corn's pollinating. And, and um, you know, if it doesn't pollinate and have good weather, it doesn't put on a big ear, it doesn't get tall. So this is not what they would refer to as a bumper crop. Now this is what you get in Kentucky when you farm. Right there. How long is it gonna take? So as we shell the corn, um, and, and you see the videos of us dumping it in the grain cart, the reason they put it in the grain cart is because they don't want to stop the combines. So if the combines stop, they're not working, and those are very expensive pieces of equipment. And if you're just sitting there dumping the corn just parked, you're putting hours on your machine. And while it doesn't seem like very long, very many hours, over a course of a year, it turns into quite a bit of, quite a bit of time. So they dump them, one, to keep hours off the machine, and two, to be more productive. So they say that you can shell two, three, five more acres. I don't know, I'm making numbers up, but you know, several more acres a day by just dumping corn or beans or wheat or whatever it is that you're, you're combining on the go. And so that's why you see them dumping in those and those tractors will go to the trucks. Once it goes to the truck, typically um, it can kind of go one or two places. It'll either go to the grain bin or to go to the elevator. Um, the elevator is where you sell the corn. The grain bin is where you store the corn. And so the reason you store corn, it might be a little bit wet, and so you gotta dry it down so it will you know, get within um, acceptable parameters, if you will. Um, a lot of times in the fall, the price on corn is cheaper because everybody has new corn to get rid of, and they gotta get rid of it. And so lots of corn goes to the elevator, kinda goes into that supply and demand thing. So if you can store it and hang on to it for a couple of months, get through harvest, prices typically go up a little bit.
let the help run the combat. That's what you call one real bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to the old days. This isn't the Valerie. She's normally with me, but to me, Corey, so I've known Corey, I guess, what, 20 years at this point? Probably. And so I've known Corey about 20 years. He's been he's been on the farm and he helps my brother and he farms as well. But um, we were just sitting here talking about how much farm has changed and, and everything just in the time that he's been here. But Corey's pretty much family at this point. We did a, we did this video, when did we did this video last time? Do you remember? Four or five years ago, we'll just go with that. From that point, the amount that the equipment has changed, I think you guys were still in the 1960s. Seven. And Jamie was in a 680. So yeah, you know, just how much equipment's changed from then to now, it's as far as uh, how fast, you know, and for, for lack of a better term, how fast you can go and how much you can get done on, on a normal day. It's pretty significant. Or I don't know if we were running one green over there too. Do you remember? But it was the old 4860 and uh, right. Okay, so they were running the old John Deere's. Um, equipment's changed, trucks has changed. Corey still won't hardly talk, so. <laughs> Actually, it's not true. If I shut this camera off, he won't shut up, so. <laughs> you know, hopefully, you know, this video is just neat and something to see, and, you know, it's a uh, show, kind of like I say, where we come from, and, you know, I've got, I got Dad helping out all those tractors. So that's kind of cool, and then, um, yeah, so just pretty neat. As you can see, we didn't get no rain for six weeks this summer. <laughs> yeah, so so the corn, they got it out. It was a late start. It was real wet, wasn't it? And yeah, it was later cold. It was later corn. It was wet and cold. And then um, this is actually some of the better looking corn on this farm. And then Jamie said she was in the second day put rain. Yep. And then uh, it didn't rain again until sometime in July plant's head, but if you look at the top of the plant, that's a tassel. And when they tassel, it's pollinated. So these corn seeds are boys and girls, essentially. And they got to pollinate to make corn. And when they pollinate, you want it to, you don't want it to be hot and dry. And that was exactly extremely hot and extremely dry. Yeah, it was, it was kind of rough here this summer. If you look across that cornfield there, you can kind of see the, the difference in some of that corn. But you know, like Dad said earlier, the farming was easy. Everybody did it. Rare thing even to see somebody Corey's age farming at this point. Very many of us. And then most of the farmers that do farm are guys that are born into it. Right. And, because uh, I mean, it's just a, the overhead to get started is, well, it's sickening. What's a what's a new time by now? Half a million bucks. Probably. And then it, with with heads or you got to So what's a new? Uh, what's a so this an April corn plant corn head? You can see on the shell it grows at a time. Can you buy a new corn head for hundred grand? Probably. I'm hoping for about that. And then a grain a grain table is probably about the same. Ain't it? Can you make it up here at all? So you're $700,000. I don't know, though. Just to have the equipment. And right. hope and pray to God you have a crop to use it with. Because <laughs> it's like, every, you know, farming's like everything else. It's, there's supply chain issues. And so I know Jamie was saying there's some stuff that he's been wanting to order. On order. We already made corn heads over a year ago. Yeah, and then he said there was like some lights that he wanted to get, seven inch LEDs and then cameras. So this is pretty cool. Check this out. This is in case you're too lazy to look left. Do you watch the screen? You know, which is, it sounds funny, but it's actually, there's a lot going on when you're shelling anything. You know, these, these snouts, you kind of see them in there. They go between the corn rows. Hit a rock that's sticking up out of the ground. You need a new snout. You need a new snout. <laughs> and so, you know, you're doing your best to, to, to not drive corn on the ground. You're doing your best not to fold up a snout. 
hitting somebody. Yep. You know, there's a lot going on. These uh, combines have tons of sensors on them. Right. Yeah. So the old ones I grew up with, a lot of times you figured something was going out when it just quit working. <laughs> you know, caught on fire. Caught on fire. <laughs> uh, and then uh, these new ones, they have all these sensors on it, so something goes wrong, it'll tell you pretty quick. However, you know, just like your car has all those nice little sensors on them, sometimes they don't work. No. And sometimes your combine or your car is perfectly fine, and you got a bad sensor. And then you go back to the whole supply chain issues. I mean, trying to have day trying to figure out what's wrong with it. And it's a three dollar sensor. Well, I ain't not three dollars anymore. Well, <laughs> but you know, it's like Dad was telling me they got a bunch of new combines built. And they can't ship them. They ain't got rubber on. They don't have tires. Who would have thought? In this day and age, you would go get tires. Right. I don't know. What's the world coming to? Say bye, Corey. Say ya. Yeah. Sing for us, so we're gonna sing. <laughs> we gonna sing, Nolan. Whatever y'all want. I think he's gonna sing. Thank God I'm a country boy, but John Denver. Well, Nolan, let you. I appreciate you guys. You and your dad let me come out here today. Yeah, we're glad you come out. Hopefully, I haven't been too much in the way. No, not too much. You gonna stick with it? You think? Yeah, I reckon so. You look like you're a lifer. Yeah, I guess so. Hey, I will say, Nolan and I risk life and limb. Yes, we did. To get, run over by a track. Uh, to get you guys a really cool action shot. Uh -huh. And uh, and then, not only did we almost get ran over by a tractor, we actually got hit by the tractor. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, we didn't get hit by a tractor, it was a green card to hit us. Same difference. Either way, it would have been bad. What's the turtle man say? You remember him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Live action. Yeah. Live action. <laughs> My cousin Dalton was driving a green cart. And I think he was probably the most nervous one <laughs> out of the bunch. I've been off the farm for 24 years, I guess. Before my time. Before Nolan's time. Just because I don't farm doesn't mean I don't still love it and still miss it. Kind of once it's in your blood, it becomes kind of part of who you are. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, yeah. Like I say, it's been a good day, and I appreciate you guys having me out here. I think we're going to call that a wrap. So, uh, say bye, Nolan.
once they're done shelling corn, they get all the corn done, all the soybeans done. Um, they will go back and plant a cover crop in some of the, like the high water erosion areas. Um, they'll leave us out here. It, it, you know, we get snow and rain and it kind of breaks down and decays and rots. And in the, in the spring, they'll run some vertical tillage over it to kind of break it up some more and they'll plant soybeans behind corn. Uh, Jamie and dad don't plant any winter wheat anymore. We used to, when I was a kid, we planted a ton of wheat. Uh, I don't think they do any of that. They might grow a little bit of barley just for cover crop seed, but that's typically how the farm goes. I mean, you know, this is just a typical fall. It's just the best time of year to be on a farm. You work uh, growing up on the farm. You uh, work all spring and summer looking forward to this time of year. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. If this is something that you guys are interested in, I could absolutely do more of these. You just need to let us know in the comments below. Thanks for giving me your time and we'll talk to you guys real soon. Hey, come here. Miss some.